Hello, my name is Heather Mackey. I am the owner of Rare Bird Medicine, and today I wanted to take a moment to talk about helping spirits and shadow work. Shadow work, um, I would say, is something the year 2020 has offered humanity. <laughs> You're welcome, humanity. Here's some shadow work. <laughs> Did you know that many black lives are being extinguished? And um, if you weren't aware, that's occurring with a rapidity well beyond Caucasian lives being extinguished. And it matters that that's happening and their lives matter. And um, of course, all lives matter. And it, it and because of that, it matters when, when there are certain groups of people whose lives aren't being respected and honored. Um, so that's, that's a shadow shadow work growth edge for humanity and and i say shadow because it's it's like hidden in the shadows there are a lot of caucasians that suddenly due to social media due to um the our ability in the modern age to receive information like video footage there are a lot of caucasians that have become quite shocked in, in the past several years as they've started to receive some of the footage of these valuable lives that have just been extinguished uh, due to racism that still exists. So so that's some shadow work that's come up. Um, shadow work around um, death. Hades sits in the shadows. He's resting in the shade there. He's not, <laughs> he's not your little sun friend. <laughs> Bacon and sun being like, hey, we don't know when he's coming. We don't know. We all get to get touched by him. His cold shoulder, I mean, his cold hand will reach for our shoulder at some point. And I'd be like, bye. And he'd be like, <laughs> you know, death is imminent. I love to say that. Because uh, it is. <laughs> You're going to exit flesh costume. So, so shadow work would be making peace with that. Making peace with the fact that you will die. Making peace with the fact that everything that is alive will die. That's shadow work. That's, that's looking at that which is more in the ebb, more in the hidden, more in the subterranean, less in the, in the right there in our awareness. We're looking at it. We're dealing with it because it's so present. It's where we look to what's hidden when we do shadow work. And um, to me, the most valuable shadow work um, I've ever done is is to be with me and be like, okay, do you embrace the fact that you're going to die? Because that's coming. Have you made peace with it? Are you good with that? Have you made peace with the concept of anyone that you love, any being, any aliveness that you love dying? Because that might happen too before you exit. Are you at peace with that? Have you made peace with it? Um, and of course, you know, like when someone dies, I've buried so many, so many, so many beautiful people. Um, when someone dies, it's still going to come up. You're still going to grieve. But just have you spent any awareness in that shadow truth? <laughs> have you taken any time to shine light into that shadow such that you are a little bit more prepared when someone exits flesh costume? You're a little bit more ripened on the vine to um, drop from the tree of life. <laughs> as it were, when, when it's your time to exit flesh costume. So, um, yeah, I feel like this year has offered a lot of shadow work for humanity, and, and that's why we can see a lot of resistance to this year, uh, because shadow work typically is not um, flying a kite in the sun and giggling <laughs> like a silly goofball. You know, it's like... It's, it's, it's looking at that which doesn't serve. It's looking within to see what, where we need to evolve, where we need to grow, what is ours to do. And, and to me, shadow work is never about, I'm not a steward of someone else's evolution or growth. And actually the universe keeps that in perfect balance and I don't need to take up that duty and that mission. So it always comes back to me, like, are there ways in which I am hiding aspects of things that if I put light upon them, I might find they're causing me to not be fully in alignment with who I say I want to be, to not live a life worth living, and to, to see and create the life I say I, I choose to see and create. 
So, so it's valuable. It's precious to check in with the self, to, to be with the self, get honest with the self and, and say, yeah, I spend, I spend a lot of time on uh, technology and I wanted my life to be a lot about travel and hiking. Okay, let me make, let me, let me be aware of that. Let me shine light on it rather than just spending the rest of my life engaging with technology. Let me stop, check in. Is there anything I'm doing that's not aligned with what is my vision for my life? Yeah, I don't want, I didn't want to spend as much time with technology. Okay, I'm going to trade some. I'm going to start planning a trip. I'm going to start setting a timer when I get on technology. Um, teach their own. It's, it's valuable to be aware of, because you are the steward of your own evolution and growth and you are the steward of your life and the, the path you take and where you walk and where you go and how you show up and what you say. You're not the steward of what the ocean does, but you are the steward of the ship on the ocean. So the ocean, the ocean of life might get choppy. It might throw a lot of different things your way. You are the steward of how you handle your ship in the ocean of life each and every day. That's, that's you. So the reason I, I mention in this particular talk, helping spirits, um, in the quantum self class that I teach, we start with helping spirits. We determine what our team is. I don't need to sell you my team. I'm here to offer some options on what that could look like for you potentially. Um, and then once I'm clear on what my helping spirit team is, the next thing we do in the quantum self class is we embrace our fears. We give up, we stop, we stop resisting and pushing against fear. And we allow it to move through and out of the inner household of our mind, our consciousness, our life, so that we can turn our attention more fully to um, what is worthy of our attention. So based on what we say we want. <laughs> so, so if you are atheistic, agnostic, or sci deeply scientific and, and not religious or spiritual at all, if you identify in those, in those ways, um, I've thought a lot about how to how to help people that identify that way because it's a, a large majority of people uh, at Earth Rock School these days. Um, so you would probably know better than I what what your helping spirit team is. I would say one helping spirit that's available is herbs. Plant medicine is a helping spirit. So um, I've taken a lot of different herbs to help with chronic depression and suicidal ideation, and they've helped immensely. And I've noticed the difference when I don't take them. So one helping spirit, and, and if you don't like the word spirit, you can say one helpful thing you can do for yourself uh, if you hold that philosophy is to use herbs or plant medicine to help to lift the spirits or help to lift the attitude or the way one holds the world. Um, another, another helping um, aid that you can have as you try to connect with and work on your fear, your work, what is yours to do, your evolution, what you're the steward of in the ocean of life, um, is connecting with the concept that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Everything is made of energy. Fundamentally, energy is 99.9999999994% emptiness. So everything's, I mean, if we're going to round up, it's just all emptiness, folks. <laughs> And it looks like a bunch of divergent opinion sack and all kinds of stuff going on, but it's really just emptiness. So we take the theory of science and theory of religion and theory of spirituality, whichever one you've chosen to hold as your truth. Um, and, and I would say they're all true because whatever you believe is true for you. And in that sense, at Earth Rock School, it's true. It's true in the vessels that choose to hold that as truth. It's true to them. Um, you can, uh, you can be aware that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. You are made solely of energy. Everything's made of energy. There's no threat. That, that awareness is alluding to the awareness that eternality is the nature of energy. If it cannot be created nor destroyed, and everything in the cosmos is made of energy then everything is eternal. It will always be here. You can't destroy it. You can't get rid of it. Bye. You can't do that. And you can't make it happen. What is, will be. So that can give um, some peace because you can become aware as you do shadow work and as you work on what is yours, that you are the steward of your energy. 
And you can choose for your eternal energy any attitude you want about it. You can hold it however you like. You can hold it with love. You can hold it with gratitude. You can hold it with disdain. You can hold it with distrust. You can hold it in any way you like. Um, I find that those that do choose a religious or spiritual philosophy uh, for their theories, just like scientists have their theories, those theories tend to offer some other helping spirits, like the angelic seraphim, like the elemental spirits. In Native tradition, it'd be like a mountain spirit, a river spirit. Uh, and um, there are a lot of, I mean, there's astrology. Those are elemental spirits, right? There is tarot has elemental spirits. Feng Shui has elemental spirits. There are a lot of concepts that represent and show the elemental component throughout the annals of time. But, but a, a primal concept of elemental spirits would be fairy fey for air, salamander for fire, wood elf gnome for earth, and undine mermaid merman for water. So those are elemental spirits that you can, you can choose to have on your team. There's the concept of having a spirit guide. There's the concept of having um, your ancestors accessible to you. There are a lot of different religions, philosophies, beliefs that, that ancestors would be helping spirits. So when we go to do shadow work, shadow work is where we recognize I'm with me every breath and I'm never the commander of another person's ship, but I'm definitely steering this one that's moving through the ocean of life. So I am going to call on my helping spirit team. For me, um, there's many I haven't learned about yet because I haven't engaged with all 7.8 billion belief matrices here, but... But every helping spirit I learn about, I add to my team. I'm like, love it, want it, yep, thanks, take it, yep. Mm -hmm. I have a massive power animals, massive helping spirit team. So when I'm going to do work that feels difficult, like facing trauma, facing pain, facing upset, I call on my helping spirit team and I say, be here with me. Let's, I build that bridge. Come on, ancestors. Come on down, snowy owl. Come on, power animals. Get in here. Come on, angelic seraphim. Come on, elemental spirits. Come on, spirit guides. Everybody, everybody, you're welcome. Let's fill the room up. Okay, Heather's going to do some shadow work. Heather's going to get clear. What is it that I um, am doing, saying, being that doesn't serve the out picturing of what I would say is a life worth living. Where do I need to shift? Where do I need to grow? What is my work to do? Um, yeah, I can have I can have a lot of judgment around um, two leggeds being sexualized that don't want to be male or female. You know, men and women get sexually assaulted. They get sexually assaulted. Um, so so any two legged can be sexually assaulted, and it happens to all types of them down here. So. So I can hold a lot of judgment around um, unwanted sexual attention, unwanted um, sexual, um, just just not holding sexuality, uh, which is beautiful, as sacred. Holding it as like a commodity and commodifying it, something to get. Let me get it. I want. Ah, I want some. You know, it's not a burger uh, in my in my philosophy. And that, that, that particular philosophy can sometimes cause me pain because a lot of people commodify sexuality here and they do treat it like it, it is an object and it's not sacred at all. And that opinion is allowed. How do I know? Because it's available. <laughs> there it is. Oops, there it is. There it is again. There it is. There it is. So, so when we do shadow work, we make peace with the sense that shadow and light both exist here. You can, you know, you can accept everything because everything is going to be what it is. And what the cosmos is, is diversity. So you can accept the diversity or you can constantly try to change the diversity, which you're not in control of uh, and is the nature of life, or you can try to change yourself. So shadow work is where I would work to change myself. I would find how, where is it that I am being limited, scarce, judgmental, or not offering love? Is, are there any topics where I go like, mm, on that topic, I, I'm righteous to be judgmental because judgment is not love. And that's where my cleanup work it would be because to me, a life worth living is one that's full of love, receiving and offering love. That's a life worth living, period, in, in a discussion. You know, for me, teach the wrong. You, you get to make your list. Uh, and then um, ask your helping spirits to support you in finding a new way to hold it, in a new, a new way to look at it. Feel your feelings about it if you need to cry or get angry about it. Um, so, so I hope that each of you knows well your helping spirit team. I hope you work with them on a more uh, regular basis and that your fears are faced. Blessed be.